Hey guys, today's video is going to be about one of my absolute favorite mysteries of all time and that is the escape from Alcatraz that no one really knows for sure if it was successful or not. I've already done a video about Alcatraz. If you are someone who watches my channel, you already know how into Alcatraz in general I am. It was such an interesting prison. If you don't know anything about Alcatraz, it's basically a prison situated on an island in the San Francisco Bay and it is now a museum because it is no longer in service but there was one super famous escape attempt in which bodies were never found so did these guys make it and just change their names and live out their lives in peace or did these criminals actually drown during their attempt this is very very fascinating and I'm so excited to get into it the video I made about Alcatraz will be below if you have not already seen it I would advise if you don't know anything about Alcatraz to watch that video or like do a quick google search on Alcatraz so you have a little bit of an idea of what it is but I feel like most people know what it is. So this escape took place in 1962 and I say escape because it was technically successful they did make it out of the prison no one knows if they just drowned or made it back to land. Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin came up with an extremely well thought out and extremely well executed plan. This took them several months of planning and Alcatraz, if you did not already know this, it was known to house the toughest criminals and it was supposed to be basically inescapable because of how insane the waters could be between the island and mainland of San Francisco. There is even a movie where Clint Eastwood plays Frank Morris called Escape from Alcatraz. So this is a very, very widely known mystery. So Frank Morris was arguably the mastermind behind this entire plan. He was very used to being in prison throughout his life and had even made multiple successful escapes from other prisons in his past. So he kind of knew what he was doing. And it's really funny that the reason he was even ever sent to Alcatraz was because he was just escaping. <laughs> pretty much every prison they could put him into. Alcatraz was known as the prison system's prison, so it was literally as maximum security as it got. And I just really quickly want to put it out there that all three of these men were non-violent criminals. I just thought I'd put that out there. I'm not trying to say that that makes them great people, but it's not like they're like murderers or like rapists or anything like that. Very similarly, John and Clarence Anglin, who were brothers, were sent to Alcatraz for their long history of escape attempts as well. And what a lot of people don't know unless they start to do research on this case is there was actually a fourth prisoner who basically was throughout the entire planning process supposed to escape with them. His name was Alan West and he had actually previously served prison time with John Anglin so you know they knew each other. In December 1961 they began to actively plan this escape. Alan West the only one who didn't actually end up going on the escape which I'll get to he always maintained that he was the real master behind behind the entire escape but no one will ever really know for sure i specifically wrote notes that are not like you know specifically copied from my source or anything but i wrote them down like in my own terms so i'm literally just gonna read them off of here because it's easier this plan would not have been able to have gone through if morris west and the england brothers weren't in cells all nearby each other fun fact the englands were actually not supposed to be put anywhere near each other because of of how they had together come up with escape plans in the past but those in charge I guess of assigning the cells in Alcatraz felt bad because they'll never get out of this island and let the brothers live in cells nearby each other so Clarence England's cell was the one that they chose to make their escape from and obviously in stages they were able to dig three holes each about six by nine inches wide in the cell so two were in the floor one was on the ceiling. And obviously they can't go to Sears and buy um, an electric drill to just like very easily make these holes. Or whatever you would use to make a hole. I don't, a hole that big? Like what would you use? So they had to use a bunch of crudely made tools and they even constructed dummies, like fake heads 
to fool the guards. Fake heads that they were gonna put asleep in their beds. Honestly genius because these these heads worked. The guards obviously thought that they were the real people. I truly believe that this was the most genius part of this entire escape plan. The dummies were just so insanely realistic. The Anglins were actually the ones who constructed these dummy heads. They were made from a quote, homemade cement powder mixture, including innocuous materials such as soap and toilet paper. You gotta do what you gotta do when you're in prison. Then they painted these heads with a paint similar to their skin tones since they all shared a similar skin tone, which I find to be like so hilariously convenient that they could just use the exact same paint color as all of their skin tones. The paint that they used was apparently from prison art kits and the hair that they used on these dummies were pieces of hair from the floor of the prison barbershop. <laughs> so they needed something in their plan to account for the crazy tide in the San Francisco Bay so they also constructed life jackets and a raft. They basically just used a bunch of raincoats which I guess every inmate at the prison had raincoats and they were actually able to get like raincoats donated from other prisoners. I love that. I love how they were just probably like yeah we're gonna try to escape like we're gonna need some raincoats for a raft and these other prisoners were like dude I got you. I hope that that was like the way it went down you know. <laughs> so they glued over 50 raincoats together to make this raft and they also stole some raincoats from unsuspecting inmates and they were able to glue them all together from glue that they stole from the glove shop which was probably like where they worked at Alcatraz make gloves and orange is the new black didn't they make underwear and then like start to like wear the underwear and then like sell it to like perverted men prison another amazing moment of pure genius in my opinion was from alan west the guy who did not make it on the actual escape he had constructed a very crudely made power drill in the past from prison materials but unfortunately this like hair clipper thing that he was using as his drill wasn't going to cut it cut it cut it. So this is where the genius part comes in. West heard that the prison vacuum broke. He was able to, I guess, like ask um, prison management and was approved to fix it. And while he was fixing this vacuum, he noticed that it had two motors, which is a fucking jackpot. And not only did this vacuum have two separate motors, he took one of the motors out to see if the vacuum would work with one motor. And it did. So he literally was able to steal a motor out of the vacuum just like that. But unfortunately, this drill didn't really help them in the end and it was apparently really loud. Okay, so they each needed to create a hole big enough in their cell to literally fit themselves through and West apparently fell behind because he was so focused on creating life jackets and paddles for their raft. And this ended up being the reason that West was not able to make the escape with the other three men. He did not have a big enough hole made in his cell for him to escape out of. So even though he was very much involved with a lot of the escape, he fell behind during this period and was no longer able to attempt the escape with them. This escape occurred on June 11th, 1962. So apparently once the men were able to climb through holes in their ceiling, they climbed, quote, 30 feet up the plumbing to the cell house roof and then made their way about 100 feet across the roof, then climbed down down about 50 feet of piping down to the ground. So that is how they got out of the building and around the building. And that is all we really know. Nobody knows what happened after that. Alan West claimed that the plan that they had come up with altogether was to use the raft to take them to Angel Island, which was nearby Alcatraz. They would be able to rest there and then re-enter the bay on the other side of the island and swim through a waterway called Raccoon Straits and then on into Marin and be free men. The plan was then to steal a car, then all together break into a nearby clothing store to steal as much money and clothes as they could before all four going their separate ways. It was weird how close he was to actually being able to make it though because he apparently, according to him, quickly was able to make it to the roof after the men had escaped, but he was too late because once he got to the roof, they were not on the roof, so he knew that they had already made their way 
way across that 100 foot roof down 50 feet and were probably long gone. So is it possible that they actually survived? Did anyone rob a clothing store after June 11th? Well, quite frankly, if they didn't change their plan and their plan was to steal a car and then rob a nearby clothing store, then they didn't make it. There were no reports of a burglarized clothing store anywhere in that area for over a week after they escaped. Also, no bodies were ever found, but it is extremely common for bodies in any bay, especially the San Francisco Bay, to get taken out by the tide. Coincidentally though, that same night as their escape, a man named Seymour Webb jumped to his death off of the Golden Gate Bridge in front of many witnesses. Apparently the Coast Guard responded to the scene really, really quickly, but they still were never able to find his body. So think about that. If they know for a fact that this man jumped to his death, he's in the water somewhere down there and they can't find him when they know right where he should be or they have an idea of maybe where the water could have taken him, then how the hell is anyone gonna ever know if these three men died in their attempt to get to the mainland? Another argument for the escape failing. Apparently that night the water temperature in the bay would have ranged from about 50 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit and according to experts bodily functions would be affected after about 15 to 20 minutes and there's no way that they could have been prepared for those absolutely freezing well not like literally freezing but like really fucking cold temperatures and something that I found to be so funny is that that Alcatraz actually kept the water temperature like in the showers and everything to a very very hot temperature so that no inmates would ever like take cold showers to try to I guess prepare for the water if they tried to escape they thought you know as long as we can keep these inmates from getting acclimated to the bay's water temperature then you know maybe they won't escape <laughs> another argument for the escape failing is that personal items that these specific inmates were notorious for carrying on their person all of the time were found in the bay so that you know that kind of leads you to think they probably did not survive i know that they like you know during the escape could have like lost a few things and have them kind of float away um so you know i don't know that's not like solid evidence but perhaps the most significant evidence for them not surviving the full escape is that a norwegian freighter called the ss nora Figel reported a human body floating about 20 miles from the bay and this body was reportedly face down bobbing in the water and wearing full-length denim trousers that appeared identical to a prison uniform Interestingly enough, multiple coroners from the San Francisco area agreed that a body would be able to float for about five weeks at max after drowning. And this sighting by the Norwegian freighter was only six days after their escape. And lastly, the Anglin family strongly believes that the three men did not make it. They believe that the brothers John and Clarence would have at least attempted to make some sort of contact with them. I mean, yeah, making contact with your family would put you at a little bit of a greater risk for being caught, but at the same time, you think, you know, after all of these years, they would have heard something or gotten some sort of hint. And there was even a third Anglin brother whose name was Alfred. He was also in prison at the time. He sadly died about two years after this escape. In a very ironic way, he was attempting to escape the prison he was in and got electrocuted somehow. So what do I think? Do I think that there's any chance that they made it? Before I did more research into it, I was always just kind of like, yeah, I bet they made it. I was rooting for them. Like not like rooting for them as in like prisoners should escape. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. I thought it would be kind of cool if they, you know, escaped the ultimate unescapable prison and lived, but I really don't think they did. That is all for me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there are any other cases or mysteries you would like to hear me talk about and I will see you in my next video. Bye!